this session is focusing on uh, the one factor risk matrix one factor is nothing but the whole yield to maturity as a package are parallel ships especially when you are typically assuming a parallel shift across all maturities or probably you are uh, thinking of one single hedge instrument for the whole portfolio which again is applicable when the whole portfolio is going to shift parallelly to the change in the interest rates so for those kind of simple hedging scenarios we are talking about uh, the one factor risk matrix uh, models wherein we look at one interest rate an increase or a decrease in the interest rate how much impact it will have on the value of the bond and based on uh, whatever is the change in the value of the bond because of uh, the interest rate as a one single number changing we will create our hedged instrument accordingly as we will enter either into the derivatives market or uh, whatever using that as the impact because of a change in the interest rates so on those lines the the focus is uh, see typically uh, everyone is bothered about uh, the interest rates risk there are a lot of participants whenever we talk about uh, assessing the interest rate risk the focus is on two things whatever the instrument that we are using for hedging and whatever the instrument that is getting hedged probably i have a portfolio of bonds one uh, 30% of my money is invested in two year maturity bond 50% i have in five year uh, maturity bonds and remaining 20% i have in uh, 10 year maturity bond let's say this is my overall portfolio right now probably this portfolio i am trying to hedge with some other some other interest rate future contracts i am trying to hedge this portfolio with the interest rate future contract now this interest rate future contracts now should i get in uh, with each of the contracts separately for different maturities or should i look at one single scenario itself or probably i may try to hedge this entire thing with some other index based uh, future contracts i may use a different uh, hedge instrument for hedging one portfolio because it's not mandatory that for all of the uh, for for the entire portfolio i may not get separately the futures available in the futures market let's say i have a two and a half year maturity bond five and a half year maturity loan it's not mandatory that i will get them in the futures market to create a perfect hedge so there is a possibility of a basis risk that exists in the process because what i am hedging with and what actually needs to be hedged they are two different uh, instruments but what is required to study is how they are going to move with respect to the interest rate changes right based on the past data i can do that or based on the valuation approaches we can do how each of these instrument the prices are going to move with a small change in the interest rates and uh, probably uh, the, from a hedging standpoint that knowledge is necessary from an investor standpoint they'll uh, take their decision in terms of what is the optimal combination to create a portfolio right how much depending on the risk taking ability of the person they may suggest 70% in short term 20% in medium term 10% in long term or vice versa so investors and investment analysts can typically create optimal portfolio combinations and even from a asset liability managers uh, standpoint the mapping matching of the various buckets the 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 sensitivity across the asset and liabilities across the various buckets is something that they would be doing so for each one of them understanding how the interest rates are going to impact and if the interest rates change what is the impact on their asset liability combination portfolio is something which needs to be assessed for that their what we can typically see is uh, we can think of interest rates whether they are parallel shift or non parallel shift if it is a parallel shift this one factor models will be more applicable 
but wherever we are seeing non parallel shifts we'll talk about the multi factor models which we'll cover in the next chapter right uh, so for the as far as uh, one factor models are concerned the most common ones are being duration and even uh, dv01 which is nothing but dollar value per one basis point change one basis point uh, change in the interest rate or generally decrease in the interest rate if the interest rate decreases by one basis point what would be the increase in the price of the bond uh, price value price value of one dollar sometimes uh, i mean the different terms that are typically used pvbp price value of a basis point yeah pv01 is also the same term i mean that's where pv and dv are used i mean dv is a us term basically the dollar value so pv is a very common word basis point sometimes they use basis point or 01 which is uh, basis point is also one basis point 01 is also nothing but one basis point so what we are saying is if the interest rate change by one basis point what is the impact on the price so for example if i see this using a semi annual discounting compute the dv01 for a 20 year 5% us treasury bond that is yielding 4.5% so i as a part of my calculator i can typically take the i by y as 2.25% because we are talking about a semi annual discounting scenario semi annual discounting so that's where the interest rate the yield which is 4.5 i am taking it as 2.25 i can take pmt as 2.5 because uh, 5% is the coupon that too on an annual basis so on a semi annual basis i can take it as 2.5 n which is the number of periods i can take it as 40 because this is a 20 year bond and we are talking of semi annual so n can be taken as 40 and from here i am trying to compute the present value of the bond this is what should give me the price of the bond initially okay let me try to compute uh, the price of the bond based on this so it is coming out to pv 2.5% number of periods being 40 and uh, pmt being uh, 2.25 oh, okay the rate is 2.25% so based on uh, probably the future value is 100 which is the maturity value or probably the face value so this is saying that the bond should be sold at 106.55 now what we are saying in the uh, uh, in uh, the dv01 concept is let's say if the interest rates Or probably let me do it here. If it is two point two five percent, so if let's say the interest rates become two point two four five percent, that is what a decrease by one basis point. right one basis point means uh, from 4.5 4.5% basis point is nothing but 0.01% one basis point is 1.01% change so from 4.5 if the interest rate becomes 4.49% 4.49% is on a semi annual basis it is uh, becoming 2.245% 2.245%. What is uh, the impact on the interest rate? Uh, what is the impact on the price of the bond? The price of the bond is actually becoming 106.69. One from 106.55, it is becoming 106.69. So what we are saying is, if the interest rate is falling by one basis point the price of the bond 
is increased by 0.14 dollars right this is what we call as a dv01 this is what we are calling as a dv01 which means one basis point change in the interest rate is resulting in the increase in the price of the bond by 14 uh, 14 cents so probably uh, uh, it, it's more from a perspective okay now the if the interest rates are increasing or decreasing by 10 basis points 